Hello and welcome. I'm Ginger Bill, and uh, today I, I kind of want to have like a little public service announcement or a mini rant or whatever you want to call it uh, about my to, well, to clarify my position on what the name of this title of video is. That does Odin have undefined behaviour? Yes. So yes, Odin has undefined behaviour. <gasps> Shock, horror. Ooh. But look, th th there's a reason why I want to kind of discuss this today. Um, is mainly that. There's a thing that a lot, some people bring up, I say a lot, it's probably a small minority anyway, that apparently I go out ad nauseum about, about the term undefined behaviour. I, I, I don't really actually like discussing this too much because it's just a boring topic. Uh, it's an annoying one as well, but my issue is that the term undefined behaviour is in itself undefined. Uh, this is why when I usually discuss about this topic, I try and make as many distinctions about the different kinds of UB out there as much as I can. And even to go to specify what does the U mean in un UB? Um, I, I know some people will say that I'm, I'm engaging in pointless semantic arguments in which I'll eventually just define away, or define away the problem or something. And I'm like, look, the entire discussion about UB is fundamentally a semantic one because it's literally an argument about semantics. And if you can define something away, like the problem away in certain cases, then it's literally not undefined behaviour. It's also definable behaviour. And I'm not sure what else to say to the point to the people that usually bring this up. Like, to me, the entire discussion around UB is fundamentally a semantics game. And it'll always be one. And when people complain about this semantics game part, it, it, to me, it just feels like you haven't understood the problem in the first place. Now, more modern languages, as they've been evolving, like say C++, for example, in C++26, and even they've been trying now to define more things, or at least better categorize them. So a good example of this is, um, let's we'll say you've got an uninitialized variable on the stack, used, usually it's been undefined or unspecified, and you pass it to a value, like an integer. But nowadays, they've kind of recalling this erroneous behavior. Because it does technically have a value, like if it's an int, it has a va it could be any possible value between what values an int has, and then it passes to the algorithm's thing. The compiler will just and now it's more erroneous behaviour, which has different guarantees. Unfortunately, and unfortunately, it's kind of a trade off, obviously, about what it can mean. So that's what I mean. Like, look, you're trying to make change this idea of UB and make it more clear about what that behaviour could mean. I got an example, another good example of this will be, which is kind of the more, the more general one, is race conditions. Now, Odin does clearly have race conditions and is easy to make them. Certain other languages, like say Rust, is going to be harder, to, much, much harder to have race conditions. I'm not saying nigh impossible, but it is nigh impossible. There are cases you could probably get around, but it's, you're doing much more and safe things, violating the lifetime semantics and such. But in my view, the race conditions things about in Odin and even C, these are brilliant examples of what I'd call, and even the C compiler calls, unobservable behavior. Because Odin shares a very similar model of memory, a memory model to C, and thus it makes kind of assumptions about the memory. So when a programmer violates, whatever means like that, it does have a specified definition, like certain assumptions, such as like variables that went to be volatile or meant to be atomic, and then you're treating them not different in different contexts, the compiler cannot observe the broken code that easily. And thus, it can easily produce unexpected behavior due to it being unobservable. Now, I know a lot of things I've said on the internet before, and I'm, I will apologize, actually, for certain things. But also, it's like I've said things in passing. Like, sometimes it's been on Twitter, sometimes it's been in a Discord conversation, which is always public. I will, it's usually I'm trying to treat this as like a directing as a certain person and aiming at them. Um... So it's kind of like I'm discussing with them, but then people say, oh, these public conversation habits mean you're directing everyone. I'm like, no, I'm directing it's like usually it's certain people. And this is half the problem when you deal with the internet. I'm not a very good writer. I know I'm not. Um, and it's very hard to communicate a lot of more complex ideas and show the nuance behind them because it just takes time. And I haven't got the time to learn how to make for that time, if you know what I mean, sometimes. hard. But a lot of people, when I'm discussing this topic, and I'm not saying, I would actually say the majority, not there are exceptions, obviously, and that's great. A lot of people who bring up examples of, let's say, UB, um, especially in languages, are usually so trivially definable as well. And a lot of those have already been well-defined in Odin already. Like, a good example of this would be integer underflowing or overflowing, or integer division by zero, for example, and those kind of examples. And it's like, look, Odin has them defined very well. 
Take the case of integer underflow and overflowing. Odin says all integers are defined to be two's complement, and underflowing or overflowing just follows wrapping behavior. There you go. Now, that's defined, well defined, no problem. Integer division by zero. Now, Odin currently defines it all to be trapping on all architectures. Um, but we do allow you to change the behavior if you want, because I'm still not particularly sure if it should be configurable. Like I know some people want trapping in, say, uh, development builds, and then they want, say, goes to zero or self or some other value um, in release modes, right? Because what's the user going to do when it's a tra on a trap? You'd rather just kind of keep going along and trying to pass through, depending on the case, or sometimes you want to fail early. Again, it highly depends on the problem. So like, again, it's, it's more of a you kind of want to be able to make it defined and make it work as well. So it's a question we haven't decided on. So sorry, a bit of a tangent that was, but when people usually, I tell them this, they get these trivial examples they bring up, which always kind of, an, it does a little annoy me to be honest with you, is that it can usually go one of two ways. Either they don't like that definition, says no, it should always like division by zero should be always trapping or it should be always be zero or it should be whatever, or even undefined still, which is like, because it's undefined in mathematics, don't you know? I'm like, Okay, whatever, I'm not going to go there. That's one part. But then there's the other one, which is a little bit more... That one's not like, okay, you're just making it... You just don't like a different decision. We still like it being defined some way, for the most part. The other part is that they go like, but I, but I wanted to use these specific passes in the compiler backend to do optimizations with. Now, that one kind of annoys me because it means I'm not really discussing with someone serious, right? And it means like, okay, I've got to step back and go... Is this worth actually discussing with this person? Because look, those passes are just algorithms that do things at the end of the day, man. That's what all code is. It's all the things ever do. And they're not necessarily intrinsically optimizations in themselves. To be an optimizing thing, you have to have well-defined rules to optimize within. And if these rules are ill-defined or even you just arbitrarily choosing rules as you need, then what the heck are you doing? How can you tell anyone that's called an optimization? Now, I went on this little rant for this specific part in the Wukash podcast I was on with Ryan Flurry, and it was just a minor rant that Wukash kind of put into there, for, effectively wanted me to do it, obviously. But it was more of a, like, look, I, I really, it really is all I'm going to say to people like that. Um, but I digress. Now, another example I know sometimes people brought, bring up, which is kind of a good example, is going to show the dichotomy different levels. And that is the, let's say, the case of use after free. So even in this case, um, it, it is something which is not a language thing necessarily, especially in Odin in certain cases, because especially Odin has is pretty much built around the concept of custom allocators, which are defined at this user level. Um, and so it's always the question is, okay, Odin allows for use after free. And? This is, and then, uh, very careful what I mean by this, is look, Odin doesn't specify a specific memory allocation strategy at the language level. It doesn't, unlike a, most of the languages. So yes, you could have it technically well-defined at the algorithm level, which is what it already does. Like the specific allocators have specific implementations of the algorithms that they're doing, and they may have specific guarantees for that specific allocator. But the general allocator interface is just that, it's an interface, and it has really no guarantees. Um, it has some minimal guarantee in, some, in certain places, but for the most part, not much. But then again, this leads to my problem with this general discussion, is are flawed algorithms in code considered undefined behavior now, and thus makes the language itself you be? Why is this just not, and I pardon my French, just shitty code? Like, and if it's in the context of optimizations, like, why is the compiler assuming so much in that case, in my opinion? Like, why? But, like, look, this is why a lot of people say the use after free, yeah, but it produces nonsensical results a lot of the time. And I'm like, look, no, that's actually allocated specific behavior. Could be well defined on that allocator, by the way. Yes, it's the, the language doesn't specify, but this is kind of one of my positions is where I'm like saying what? Who defines what? Right? But again, Odin isn't trying to be C, and I think a lot of people always try and compare C with Odin and then try and apply what C's rules are for stuff, because how old C is and well-defined and everything, and apply it to Odin. It's like, look, C has a lot of things well-defined in it. I say, so a lot of C's defined a lot of things in its specification, even its standard library. Like, it'll say what defines the guarantees or the expectations of, let's say, malloc et al, right? Free, realloc, calloc, whatever you want to call them. And... 
and how they work. But Odin doesn't even go that far. We're just saying, like, look, we don't even define what's going to be in the core library, and that's one thing I want to do. We'll have the base library define certain things that need to be defined on every single compiler. But for the most part, like, the core library is going to be this compiler ships with this one, the ships with this one. The, I know that sounds like a, oh, it's going to problem. Like, but Odin's not trying to be that in itself, right? It's going to be something different. So, but <laughs> this, is, this is the thing. And, I, and one of the recent comments, which is kind of why I brought this up, is someone says, look, well, Bill's go-to response is to blame someone else. And I'm like, no, I'm trying not to be in this case. I'm, I'm, I'm like, if it's anything, my go-to response always is these, what should be defined and where should it be defined if it's possible to find at a specific level, be it at the compiler level, also the language level, the compiler level, the platform level, so the architecture, the operating system, whatever. Is it now at the core library level or is it the user level as well? Like the user defined code. Like, which level is it defined at? If it's even defined at all, this is the problem. So in that case, of, it's like, look, even the case that people bring up, like, I blame somebody else, like, they're explicitly saying they're blaming me. I'm blaming the compiler, obviously, for something that it might not even be able to know in the first place about its behavior. Like, it's not undefined. It's like it's not even in its remit. So, and again, in the case of the allocator that we brought up earlier, it's, it could even allow for certain things that you think may be invalid. A good example of this, like free or delete in Odin, many allocators have that as a complete no-op. Completely. And that is perfectly fine. Again, like an arena is perfectly, like, is, is complete no-op usually, right? Um, so the use after free might be valid still. Like, maybe not what you intended, so it's erroneous, obviously. But the compiler has no, no, no information about this because you've just got a generic interface which now separates it from the implementation of that compiler and the interface doesn't really have any guarantees or, I should be very careful, very little guarantees. But this is the question. All of this, fundamentally, all of this discussion here is about responsibility and what is responsible for what. Now, if you think that's the equivalent of calling it blame, yeah, yeah, whatever, sure, whatever. Um... But, but that's, that's the question, fundamentally. Is the compiler responsible for certain things? Like, again, these I use after free bugs. Or and in, in certain languages, yes, it is. In other languages, no, it's not. Um, but then, it's, again, it's all about responsibility. Things like, oh, well, the operating system didn't find your programming language. You're the... Um, the the um, architecture you're running on the chips or the chip itself didn't define a program language. So I am the one who defined it, so therefore it's my fault. And I'm like, but th those may not define the language, but they actually put bounds on what's possible in the first place. They literally define the arena the language takes place in, and thus you are subject to its whims, regardless of any of my feelings towards them. So no, it, it's not necessarily my fault anywhere or everywhere. It's just a thing you have to consider, and it's always good to know. I do like, I do try like this discussion with people who are usually serious on this topic, and I'm happy to do so actually a lot of the time. It's just a lot of the time, social media, especially Twitter, or like a quick Discord comment where it's just directed at one person, not other people reading it, is not the is not the right medium for such a things. And I usually like talking to people. Like I, I love like, like conversating with people. That's not even the right word, but you know what I mean? In person, like with speech, because I can, you can change your conversation when you're talking to someone and it's a much more easier thing to understand someone's tone, to understand where they're coming from and they go, okay, that's it. Cause you're a person at the end of the day, right? And a lot of people get to their own opinions differently to mine. And we all have different opinions. My opinion might be wrong and it might be, I'll be willing to grant that. Um, but I, I don't know really at the moment. And it's also the, it, it just kind of annoys me it, just cause it's like, you're making a hypothesis and saying this is actually fact. And it's like, you could just ask me really, you could just ask me. Now, the last bit is with Odin, which is, which is where I started with the official position is we have no official stance on UB for Odin anywhere. We don't say it anywhere on the website. We don't even suggest it anywhere about UB, especially not having no. I know I've said things, again, in social media, off comment things, brief things, especially when you're being terse on Twitter because I'm limited to 280 characters. I don't pay for Twitter. Um, so it's kind of like, it, it's you kind of have to be 
terse and I, I it's sometimes my fault and I, I need to get better at writing is the best way of putting it and be more clearer but the problem is when I be, be clearer I'm usually longer and then when I'm terse uh, most people interpret most of my things but that that's fundamentally it UB is undefined itself as a term so when you get into these discussions I'm sorry it's a semantics game and if you don't want to play that don't play, never even start the game because as a little and then I'd ne- I'd append them. I'd then end them. I can't remember words. English. Yeah, send my first language. Even that's a Latin word. Right. Um, at the end, it's like, look, that you could mean anything. And it's like, look, you've got undefined, as in it's not defined. It's undefinable. Like some things can't be defined. Like in mathematics, um, zero to the power of zero is not really definable in a lot of cases. It's some cases it might be, but not others. It's like, again, called less is undefined. It could be unspecified. It could be underspecified. Like there are some specifications, but it's not specified enough. It could be unobservable. It could be just unknown. Like, we haven't... The behavior's unknown. It's not like... It could be knowable, we just don't know it yet. It could be erroneous. Yeah, I know that doesn't start with a U. It could mean un, unimplemented. It could mean ill-defined. As in, it's, this is different to undefined, undefined and underspecified, obviously. Like, it's defined wrong. And again, I know that doesn't start with a U, but I'm putting it in the category. It could be defined at a different level. Again, the compiler, the language, the, um, the, the platform, anywhere, right? The core library, the user's code, again, doesn't start with you, but it's in that category. And look, it's just an absolute mess. And lo- and these things need to be better defined what you're talking about when you're going to be talking about this mess of a semantics game that is undefined behavior. So thank you very much for listening. You've been listening to me now for nearly 17 minutes, so thank you. Uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day if you're watching this, so goodbye.